What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Welcome to your third stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and news report for Monday, March 1st. Yes, we are finally into March. Now, we have some good news out this morning regarding the $1.9 trillion stimulus package. First, the Senate has decided to remove the minimum wage tax provision that would essentially make uh, larger corporations pay a tax penalty if they don't pay their employees at least $15 per hour. Well, why is this good news that the Senate decided to pull this out? Here's the reason why. This is good news because this tax bill would have taken weeks to push through the Senate. Right now we have two weeks. We have less than two weeks. We only have 13 days to get this bill passed. That's by the Senate kicked back to the house to pass it again because there will be an amendment. They will have to take out the $15 federal minimum wage increase and then it has to go over to President Biden's desk for a signature. All this has to happen within the next 13 days. So this is good because now Democrats will not have to worry about this tax bill and instead they can go ahead and do a standalone bill for the $15 minimum wage or a compromise of it and they can focus on the, the main parts of the $1.9 trillion stimulus package. Right now, some are saying that this is the priority. However, I just wanna reiterate something that many people don't realize, is that the Senate is still confirming cabinet members. They're going to spend the majority of this week still confirming cabinet members, so that will take up some of their time. Just keep that in mind. The Senate is going to be split between you know, dealing with cabinet members and the confirmations, and also dealing with the $1.9 trillion stimulus package, which is eventually gonna to have to go through a voterama. Yes, another one. So, here's what we know. According to, the, according to multiple reports, many lawmakers have already stated that a $10 to $12 minimum wage provision could see some bipartisan support, but they don't know if Democrats would support this and they don't know if Democrats are willing to compromise on this issue. And that is what we will have to wait and see. But this is good that the Senate technically just pulled this provision from the bill because it would delay stimulus by some are saying by at least three weeks. Well, we only have two weeks and then we still have other things in the middle. Right now, by removing the tax plan provision from this $1.9 trillion stimulus package, it will allow other pieces of legislation to possibly get passed quicker. Democrats are still going to look for ways to increase the minimum wage. However, at this time, it's not gonna be their, their main priority. They're going to look at the entire bill and look at the entire bill as a whole thinking, okay, this is good, let's pass this, this would suffice for now. And then as soon as that passes, they'll get right back to the drawing board and figure out a way to pass a $15 minimum wage provision. Once again, this $1.9 trillion stimulus package, it's going to include $1,400 stimulus checks to Americans. There will be more unemployment benefits. And this is something I'm gonna to touch on in just a minute because this is where some of the major changes could be coming. We are also gonna see more funding for vaccines, state and local government help as well. Renters will get more relief and schools will see additional funding as well. All this is great, but we're not done. This all sounds good, but the problem is the Senate is still making changes and they still have a long ways to go. According to multiple reports this morning, many senators would like to see the $200,000 income threshold. They wanna see that lifted. They do not want to see a couple making $200,000 or $205,000 not get a stimulus check simply because they make $5,000 over the threshold. And this doesn't really pertain to couples uh, the most, according to this report. What it's saying is that some lawmakers are specifically uh, referencing individuals. So an individual who makes $75,000 to $100,000 gets a stimulus check or anything under that. Well, what we know is once you reach $100,000, you will not get a stimulus check, no matter how many children you have. Here's the issue. This report says some people, and some lawmakers are using this exact same uh, scenario, some people live in a very expensive area, and what if they have a large family? For instance, let's say you are you know, a, a single parent, whether your, your spouse you know, passed away, or they, you, know, you were divorced, whatever. You are a single parent living in a very expensive area, 
And then you have, let's say, four children. Four children could cost a lot of money to raise, especially on a, an individual salary. So what you need to understand and what lawmakers are trying to you know, put out there is there's a lot of these people here in the United States and we cannot just back away because, hey, you make $100,000. They say we need to help out these people. And this isn't just Democrats are saying this or progressives. There are many Republicans doing this exact same thing, saying, hey, we're leaving out this group of people. But here's what we know. Okay, here's what we know. Right now, the number two Senate Democrat is Dick Durbin. He says, and I quote, there's conversations about a little bit of a different approach to some of these provisions, but we don't want to derail reconciliation. What we we want to do something that's politically feasible with House cooperation. And this is where more changes come into play. Again, these are some going to be some big changes and changes are going to happen. They're going to happen soon. It's going to happen quickly because they cannot wait. According to Joe Biden or President Biden, this has to happen quickly. They need to get some relief now and it has to get passed as soon as possible. So here's where we're at. We know that the House wants to get this passed as quickly as possible. That's one of the reasons why they left the $15 federal minimum wage provision included. But the problem is that a set, the Senate has to go through another voterama. They did this, uh, what, earlier this month? Uh, like about a month ago? Actually, not earlier this month because it's March. But they did this about a month ago. And this, this voterama was the budget resolution. It wasn't the budget reconciliation. They had to do a budget resolution in order to get to the reconciliation. It's confusing, but that's what they had to do. Well, in the budget resolution, there was roughly 800 amendments that had to be voted on. This lasted about 12 hours. A lot of these things, a lot of these amendments that were voted in favor of, some got included into this bill, many did not. And that's where we are gonna see some changes. What you need to understand is that the Votorama is not law. It's not law because that previous Votorama was a Votorama for the budget resolution, which isn't law. The budget resolution is law. And that's where things are going to make a big change. So what you need to expect is to see a bunch of new amendments that could make this stimulus package better. President Biden says if you can make this package better and cheaper at the same time, great. I'm all ears. Even Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has stated that if you have any ideas, any ideas whatsoever, send them to his office or send them to the Senate committees. This is for lawmakers, not for people like you and I. So as of right now, there are a lot of amendments that have been making this way to Senate Majority Leader's uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's office. So we'll see what actually they pass. What they are and whether or not they pass, again, we don't know. We're going to have to find out together. But no lawmakers expect the current House bill to pass through the Senate as it currently stands. There will be changes. Yesterday, I mentioned that many lawmakers expect this bill to be reduced to roughly $1.6 trillion. This is down from the $1.9. This is going to save about $300 billion. That number has been getting more and more support as of lately, that 1.6. And that has many progressives a little bit upset because they are pushing to increase that number. They want to see more stimulus. A lot of economists say more stimulus will be better, but then some experts warn that more stimulus could cause inflation to come much faster, which would actually hurt the economy while we're still recovering. A few of the major changes that we know about that are being discussed Again, some want to increase the bill, some want to lower it, but a few of the major changes. Number one, we have income limits for the stimulus checks. This is gonna be a big one, and even Republicans see the income limits increase, um, and it, they would like to see this increase in exchange for giving a stimulus check to somebody in prison. They say there's no reason for somebody in prison to receive a stimulus check when people on the outside of prison here in the community are not even getting a full stimulus check or even getting anything at all. They say, why would we give somebody in prison a stimulus check when we could give it to somebody that makes a little bit over 200,000 as a couple or 100,000 as an individual, or we just lift the limits altogether. So we will see what happens there, but Democrats do want to see uh, prisoners uh, receive a stimulus check as well. That's currently what is in the bill. There are also talks of lowering the $400 per week uh, unemployment income boost. Now, that is something that is currently at $300. 
Well, what they want to do is bring it from 400 back down to 300. Here's what we know. This was an amendment that the majority of senators back during the Votorama back in February. It would have capped the weekly boost, not at $400, at $300. That's what it currently is now, at $300. Here's the issue. Right now, they're saying that the, the Votorama and all the Democrats, or the, I think there was eight or nine that voted in support of, capping it at $300 as opposed to four. Well, we didn't know exactly what it was going to be at that time, but now we do. Now, President Biden wants $400, or at least the House wants $400 per week, but the senators, all, or the majority of them, wanted $300 per week capped. Now, we will see what happens there, but most likely, there could be a, they could pull it back down to $300. I don't know, but that would be a major change. If it does, if this does go from 400 down to 300, what we are hearing is that this could go, instead of all the way through uh, August 29th, they could push it back into September 30th. However, there are also talks of taking that August 29th date and bringing it all the way back into June, to June 30th. And if that happens and take off another couple months and take off $100 per week, that's going to look like a win for Republicans. So I don't know if that's going to happen, but that is what is currently in talks. Now, another big change is coming. And the big change will happen with the $15 federal minimum wage provision. The good news is that nobody is touching, you know, a lot of the other provisions. The $15 minimum wage, they have to pull us out of the Senate or out of the Senate bill because it can't pass with the Senate parliamentarian's rule. Well, some progressives say, let's just get rid of the Senate parliamentarian. Others say, like Joe Manchin, say, no, I will not vote in favor of getting rid of a parliamentarian. I will not vote in favor of getting rid of the filibuster. And I will not vote in favor of overruling the Senate parliamentarian's decision. So Senator Joe Manchin currently holds a lot of the cards and a lot of the power. But we will see what happens as we move forward this week. Again, the Senate has a lot of stuff that they are working on. But the good news is that nobody is touching the vaccine funding, school funding, rent and nutrition assistance, and tax credits. These all seem to be safe from changes at this time. I know some people have addressed the child tax credit from $3,600, possibly moving up to $4,200. That's not going to happen because the way Mitt Romney's plan was written was to take a lot of the money from state and local governments, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the, the taxes as well, take that money from there and put it to the $4,200 child tax credit. Well, Democrats didn't like that because it's taking all their funding from other priorities and putting it into children. So it's pretty much just a way for Mitt Romney to say, hey, well, you don't want to provide for families and children, like you say, because you're more, you're more worried about providing money to you know, state and local governments and things like that. I'm not getting to that debate. That would be for another video, but you get the idea. So as always, remember, things could change at a moment's notice. We don't know for sure what is going to be at, at this in this bill when it is finalized. Yes, it was finalized by the House, but the House technically doesn't have as much power as the Senate. The Senate is where all the changes are going to happen. If we see a change in the Senate, okay, what I expect is it's going to stick. So the House bill, it's a great framework, and this is why I addressed last week as well. The House put the framework together, but now it has to be kicked over to the Senate. They will probably take this up. They will, they will take this, this up this week. Hopefully, we'll, we will see what pass, and then... Like I said, any amendment that is made, there will be at least one change, and any change, the whole bill has to go back to the House to be revoted, repassed, and then it can go back to pre or go to pre President Biden's desk for a signature. So that's where we're at right now. But if you have any questions on any of this, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. I understand a lot of the stuff is very confusing, but we got to keep up on this. And I say this because if you're not keeping up on what we are seeing in these changes, again, they could switch any any time, but a lot of these things are starting to come back. We're hearing more reports on you know different things like student loan forgiveness. Uh, people are wondering what about Social Security. People are wondering what about you know hazard pay. A lot of these talks are starting to come back. We could see amendments on these. But again, as we do, I promise I'll keep you updated on all the new amendments. Again, I just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.